Welcome, guys. Uh, today in studio, we have with us uh, an entrepreneur, uh, a, fish, uh, a financial advisor, an author, uh, an all-round good bloke, <laughs> uh, and there I say an honorable man. Yes, Seattle uh, Ratsusa. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Mpo. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's good to to have you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure being here also. Okay. Yeah. So you are a, a financial advisor? Yes, um, yeah. primarily I am okay. um, a financial advisor. Uh, so that's, that's, that's really my profession. Okay. I think I was thrown in there uh, from school. Okay. Um, I read Zora also now it's a school or... You know, you do you do a course, and then you want to be in the field of that course. Yes. Um, so that's that's really what happened. And I was so, I think, so fortunate to to have done finance, and then I walk into the financial industry. I work in there for a couple of years. So okay. so now I'm 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 seen okay. um, as that. So every every time when people meet me, they see the financial advisor. Okay. Yeah. So what's the favorite part of your of your job? Um, it's counseling. Okay. Um, we do a lot of counseling. Um, you know, uh, Botswana, they, 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 they are still a lot behind when it comes to issues of finance. So, um, you know, sitting down with them and then they come out and tell you the mistakes that they have made, how they want to improve their lives. I think that's really what I enjoy. Um, because it's, it's, uh, earlier on I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Well, okay. So, <laughs> so I couldn't do, um, you know, my sciences when I got to varsity because mm. I did not do well, okay. um, you know, in the sciences. So I, I went for finance. So I didn't know how I was going to get to counseling people. Okay. Um, only to realize that God had a plan. He yes. said, "Look, you're in finance, but you will still be doing exactly what you thought." You'll be counseling in a you different know? way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so today we were talking about. Uh, how do we steward God's provision to enable us to be able to live an inheritance for your children's children? Yeah. Uh, it's in Proverbs that says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Yeah. Uh, but a sinner, his wealth is stored up for the godly. I was actually thinking about it. Oh, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. That the Bible actually says a good man. So it means that the good man actually acquired their inherit or built up their wealth uh, by doing things above board. Yeah. And the sinner probably was cutting corners. <laughs> That's why probably he's losing yeah. <laughs> his stuff. <laughs> because my father had a saying that I think I was about 13 or so. Uh, and I was very much into cars. Yeah. Yeah, so every time we'd be driving anywhere, I'd be looking at these cars like, wow, look at that, look at that. And he'd always had a statement. He'd always say, Mwanaka, usikawa ile tsa dilo tsa batho. O sa itse gore ba di bone jang. Loosely translated, don't uh sa tsa kwa. Uh so I <laughs> yes. Hey. So basically, don't go around longing or yeah. is it coveting yeah. people's stuff, yeah. not knowing how they manage to acquire, acquire them. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm a 20 year old. So, yeah. Uh, recently graduated, just got my job offer. How do I start building wealth? Yeah. Yes. You know, just going back to, uh, to, 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 to what the Bible says, mm. um, when it says a good man, right? Um, so maybe we should define a good man. Wait, what's, right? what's a good man? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, so I, I, I think here we are speaking about um, someone who follows the ways of God mm. and um, someone who's pushing God's agenda. And everyone who really pushes God's agenda, they tend to build wealth. Mm. Right, because God's agenda is to um to empower people to help more people um you, you know with the gifts that we have been given. Yes, yes. So if I sit down and I spend my time trying to come up 
uh, with a program that is going to help um, you know, kids in the villages who don't have the advantages that maybe we have in the cities, right? The moment my program catches on and government wants to adopt this program, I'm going to become rich, mm. right? Yes. That is what good men do. They think about other people. How can we resolve their problem, yes, right? Yes. And then um, as a reward, um, God has promised that everyone who follows him um, you know, and when you follow God, you follow God with everything. He gives you ideas. Do you follow the ideas? Do you have faith to say, okay, no, when God says, this is what I need to try, I need to pack up like Abraham had to pack up Believe. and then go to a village, um, you know, which is so remote somewhere there because God says that is where I want you because that's where your program is going to work out. Yes. Do you have enough faith or you're going to feel, ah, I can't go there, man, I'll be leaving everything in yes. the city, right? So I think that's a good man. Um, so you, 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 you acquire wealth. So when you are young and you are just starting out, um, you know, you just um, graduated, you are, you, you know, starting work, you shouldn't be thinking about wealth as in, um, with the money that I'm making, I have to save everything so that I accumulate wealth, right? Because you might be doing that, um, but you might not be saving God, right? Yes. Um, what God really wants, because by the time you graduate, I'm sure God would have spoken to you a couple of times yes. to say, this is what I really want you to do. Yes, yes. Um, you realize that most of us, um, you know, we've taken a really long route to get yeah, true, to true, what true, God true, really yeah, wants true, us true. to do. Yes. <laughs> You know, I was telling someone. Uh, someone was asking me, um, "Are you, are you, are you, are you planning on becoming a pastor?" Mm. Um, and, and I'm like, "Well, I, I've always known um, that I am a pastor from mm. a very young age. Mm. Um, it's only that um, you know sometimes we don't have that much faith, and then we feel, no, I have to do one, two, three, four first." And then Before. when I'm done, yes. that is when I'm going to do this. Because uh, for some reason, um, the lack of faith is telling us that um, God might not be able to provide if you were to go straight yes. into what he wants us to do, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, uh, you know, I always encourage um, young people to, to, to first um, understand what God wants them to do, mm -hmm. right? Because work is work. Mm -hmm. And normally God will give you work maybe to just to make ends meet so yes. that you don't give up in life. Yes, yes. You know, yes. not because that is where you are going to get your wealth, the wealth that you can leave for your children. Mm -hmm. Because in most cases, the best wealth you can leave for your children is when you do what God had intended you to do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, True. you are just going to be at work, you'll buy a car, you'll buy a house, and then you get fired, you get retrenched, and then those things mean nothing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I was just thinking about it is how do we define wealth? Yeah. Because I was just thinking of my own self. Like when I was younger, probably wealth meant uh, sports cars. Yeah. That's what wealth, that's yeah. how I thought wealth, wa wealth yeah. was. Uh, but now as I've gotten older, I think wealth now uh, is about the ability to buy time. Yes. Yeah peace of mind yes. and uh, generosity. I think that's wealth to me now. Yes. Yes. How would you define what is wealth? Yes. 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 So, or true riches. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the, 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 there are so many arguments around that mm. um, to say uh, when the Bible said um, a good man lives an inheritance mm. for his children's children, you know. Yes. Uh, we, we are talking about um, the wisdom of God, yes. you know, leaving them with the, with the, with the wisdom of God. And, and others are talking about uh, material wealth, mm. um, you know. Um, but, but, but wealth really can be defined in, in, in any other way. Mm. Um, from my own profession, um, wealth, we are talking about an accumulation. Yes. Um, you know, you have to accumulate things. So when you start to work, we don't expect to, to, to you to be wealthy. Um, but it's something that you have to accumulate over a period of time. Yes. Um, it's not about the money that you earn. Um, it's all about what you can put aside, right? Uh, basically, good management of God's resources, right? Yes, uh, that's yes. what creates wealth. Mm. Because um, God had said that everything that is in his kingdom is ours. Yes. But the people that we are going to call wealthy 
are those that um, had in their possession um, God's uh, uh, you, you know materials, and they they were able to manage these materials well um, to an extent that they can actually expand um, whatever they were given. Yes, you remember the story of the three men who were given, um, <coughs> you know, who were given um, three years. Yes. Um, so, so, so these three men, um, the, 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 the ones that were uh, actually applauded were those who were able to multiply Multiple. what they had been given, yes, right? Yes. Um, so that is true wealth. So if we can be able to, um, to multiply what we have been given, because God will give you 10,000 mm. every month, yes. right? What he expects from you is to be able to take care of the 10,000 to an extent that um, you also multiply okay. the 10,000. Mm. So if you are always getting the 10,000, abwa ajawa heza, right? Mm. Um, getting 10,000, wa ajawa heza. There is going to come a time when God stops giving. Mm. And then the expectation will be that, uh, my son, my daughter, I've been giving you for so many years. I expect you to have built this. Yes. Right, um. So, so, so wealth really, um, it's it, it's an it, it's an accumulation because, um, one, we can't we can teach our kids some level of wisdom, um, right, uh, which we which will be um you know great wealth to live for 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 for, for our children, um, but we can't give our kids the skills that we really have yes. that God had given only to us. Yes. We can't give them the jobs that we have been given where you work, you mm. are an accountant, you are an engineer. You can't give your child that, mm. right? But whatever you have gotten from your work, yes. you can create it in such a way that your children can benefit from it mm. for generations to come. Yes. Uh, I think when you are just talking about the, the guys with the talents, I'm reminded of a story, well, not a story, uh, it's in J John Bevere's book. Yeah. He says that the faithfulness is the multiplying of the talents that God has given you. Absolutely. That by, that's how you show faithfulness. Yes. That is what God says, that the, you are being faithful. Yeah. And you also you mentioned at the end there, because something that we see a lot of that happens is that uh, parents would have left an inheritance for the kids. Yeah. And then the kids will squander whatever the parents had accumulated yes. how do we uh, as parents yeah. uh, make sure that we that doesn't happen yeah yes yeah so so um, you are basically talking about um, estate planning yes uh, because uh, we we always say you know the accumulation of wealth it's equally important as the allocation of it mm. right if you are if you are a good man um, and you, 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 you have children, um, you have accumulated some stuff, right? There has to be a system that you are using that will enable um, your kids to be able to benefit from the resources that you have left for them. Mm. Remember, you, only you might know how you make those resources and how you, you've been accumulating everything. Yes, yes. But your children might be living a totally different life. And things change all the time. And out of three kids, um, they are totally different. Yes, the yes. kids <laughs> themselves, yes. right? They are totally different. So you can't assume that whatever you have left for them, they will use it the way that you had been using it, which is why there are provisions like um, wills and, um, and trusts and all of those things. All these things have to be done. Remember, we are talking about a good man. Mm. A good man is one who plans for these things yes, in advice yes. because um, a good man understands very well that we are not here forever. Mm -hmm. At mm. some point, um, God will relieve us from our duties on earth yes. and then we have to go and serve elsewhere. Yes. Right. So when you leave those people that you have been tasked with managing, mm. because Kana, when we are given children, um, your responsibility is to, to manage. Those are God's resources. Yes. 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 Right. Mm. And then now when you leave, do you want to, um, leave God's resources now? The, 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 yes. you know, like mm. what most parents do. Uh, you know, leaving um, a million to a child, um, you know, who, 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 who's naughty, um, who likes playing, um, you know, who hasn't found God, mm. and then you leave them with a million, you will destroy them, mm. right? But if you say, I'll put this million in a trust, 
they can't touch this million. You leave a couple of instructions to say this million only interest can be accessed from this million mm. and you leave off the interest for so many years until you can show whoever has been trusted with managing that money um, to say, okay, no, now that I'm married and I've gotten a university degree, now you can access 500,000 mm -hmm. if you wish maybe um, to start a family or something. Yes. The other 500,000 you will never touch is for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. You see, yes. eh, once the grandchildren are there, they also can live off the interest of that money for so long until they also show that um, they have garnered a university degree. Mm -hmm. You would have created two generations who, who are most likely going to live um, a financially free life. Yes. But by the time the, 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 the last generation gets to graduate, they thought they were getting the degree to access the funds. But in the journey, they got so disciplined yes, yes, that yes. by the time they get there, they realize, I don't want this 500000 for the car that I wanted to buy. Yes. Now the, 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 the mind has grown. The mind has grown, mm. right? Um, so you do that deliberately as a parent, just, just the way that God does that. Um, you know, God doesn't give you everything when you want it. Mm -hmm. He makes sure that you go through a process. Once you have learned certain things, that is when he starts giving you, but bits by bits. Yes. He doesn't want to start feeding you with samp before you've managed to swallow uh, uh, oats or porridge, yes. right? With baby steps, mm -hmm. right? But if you are a parent and you have accumulated so much wealth, and then you leave it just like that, saying, no, uh, my son will take three of the houses, my daughter will take um, the, 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 the money in the bank, mm. and then this one will take all the cars, mm. right? And that is a really foolish way um, of allocating your estate. It will destroy your children. They will fight among each other. Once mm. they were given more, yes. right? So there are provisions um, legally that are there, they can be done to make sure that we protect the entire estate. And it's very important for you to also study um, your children, get to understand them or who is capable of what. We know so many great men um, in the Bible who were allocating um, their wealth and they will say, okay, no, this one will get everything because they are the ones who will be tasked with taking care of the, the rest. rest. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you, you don't want to leave it to chance and say, no, I have done my work. I have accumulated all of these things. So now it's all yours. Mm. They will squander that in less than a year. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I think a lot of our uh, our people really need to be educated when yeah. it comes to financing or rather living. How do I live an inheritance and make sure that it lasts? Because I remember I was watching a documentary. Uh, this guy was saying him and his parents have never had to work a day in their lives. Mm. That probably the generation that's coming up, <laughs> that's the generation that will need to <laughs> work. work. Yeah, yeah, they've been living off the grandparents, yeah. uh, what the grandparents have managed to build up. Yeah. So the little, I think later on, we just need to be educated yeah. by people like yourself yeah. on how do we make sure that uh, the sacrifices, because, yeah. you know, honestly, uh, our parents sacrifice a lot. Yeah. And then once now they have left the earth, now they leave us. And then what do we do? We squander what yeah. they had left. Yeah. So all those sacrifices now really don't mean anything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is the biggest financial mistake that Botswana make? Um, I think I think we I think the biggest mistake um, is that we, we 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 don't learn. We assume that we will catch on with time. I think uh, it's a really really bad assumption. Mm. Um, finance is a subject that needs to be learned. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's 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 a it's a lot similar to um, you know trying to understand um, Christianity, but you don't read the Bible. Um, <laughs> yes. you, you, yeah, you you'll not really get to understand yes. it, right? You you'll argue a lot of things that you shouldn't be arguing, wasting a lot of time, you know. But the moment you start, um, you know, studying the Bible, reading it, engaging with people. Um, who are well versed with the subject also, um, you know, going to church, you know, engaging with pastors there and there, engaging with colleagues who um, who also are, are trying to, yeah. yeah, you know, it, it becomes easy. You know, you start to comprehend it, um, you know, quite easily and in a short space of time. Mm -hmm. But with finance, most of us, we feel like 
it's not a subject that should be learned. You are already earning the money, so who should teach you about money? Yes. I'm already earning <laughs> it, you know. And 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 we, you know, we we leave it to chance, and then uh, we start earning, and then um, we we you go to a shop, um, you meet someone, they tell you, uh, you know, um, you know, the best way of doing things, you know, you get your furniture, um, kind installment, you know. Mm. That way you get it now, you start paying later instead mm-hmm. of maybe um, committing your money um, to things, say, longore, musola, you know, even when that person is saying that, you kind of feel like, okay, no, this is the most responsible thing to mm-hmm. do. And then, you mm-hmm. know, buy a house, um, you know, getting property right now is the best thing to do for, mm-hmm. for, 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 for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, um, instead of, you know, buy property now. So all of these people, um, they're giving you great advice, mm. right? Um, but there are so many things that are involved in real estate that also needs to be taught, but they will not teach you that, yes, right? But yes. mm. property is a good thing, and uh, it's in your mind what property is a good thing. And then we see people now busy buying land, then they come so happy to buy the you know, um, you know, they have properties that are not valuable. Mm. The, the, the return that somebody born from those properties doesn't make sense, right? Because um, just one verse in the Bible, and then about all about Bill, about some I have interpreted the act about I feel or no, a canon hoti, a man is evil, you know, uh, but they've never gone deeper to understand, okay, no, um, but why did this uh, man of God say that? Mm at that point what right was going who on? was he talking to mm. right what was the culture at the time right so if you don't study this thing you will always get lost so i think the biggest mistake really is that we think that um conversations about money you can get advice from anyone mm. we get advice from our uncles we get advice from you know our aunts our 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 grandparents our friends right but are they really qualified to be giving you mm-hmm. that kind of advice not to say not to say that we shouldn't be taking advice from 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 other people mm-hmm. but we need to be careful where we get advice because then we make decisions that might affect um the rest of our lives mm-hmm. um so I, I think the biggest mistake really is um, the fact that we we don't study money mm-hmm. um we feel it's it, it's something that will that we'll learn along the way. And then we waste a lot of time uh, making mistakes. And then we spend half of our lives making mistakes and then the other half trying to correct to those, those mistakes. mistakes yes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a total waste of time. Now, when you look at um, most wealthy families, um, learning finance, it's very key. It's very key. Because they understand one, um, when the children are young, you need to start teaching them why. Because whatever you are building, it's um, growth and sustainability. It's highly dependent on these children mm. knowing how to manage these yes, things. Yes. Mm. So you, you, you can't allow them to just go to school and do um, a doctorate, uh, a, a, an engineering degree or a doctorate um, without understanding money. Because at the end of the day, they are kids, yes, you want them to do whatever they want to do, but you want them to understand money. That's why you will find, um, a, 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 from a wealthy family, you will find someone um, who has done engineering, has a PhD in engineering, but when the parents die, you know, they take, they, 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 they take over. You know, you, they start becoming chairman of, of all the, 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 the companies because they've always understood how the money works. Yes. Right, so whatever they were doing, they were doing because it was their passions. But they understand how money works. So, I think it's it's very critical even for us, you know, to teach our kids how money works, how we make money, how we spend, you know, how money can be multiplied. We involve them in this process as well. They are still young, so that it's not a thing of for you to have money, you have to do finance at school. It's not like that, mm. right? Um, the Jewish community also, um, you know, they're very thorough when it comes to issues of finance um, because they believe that if you can manage money, you can manage anything. You know, there's absolutely nothing you can manage. When you are made president of the country today, you will be able to manage the country, yes. right? Just understand how money works because money, um, you, you know, it gets you to a point where you have to understand the making of it. You have to understand the allocation of it. You have to understand the saving of it. You have to understand the multiplication of it. So if you understand those simple principles, you can do anything. You can be, um, you, you can run a hospital when you are not a doctor. 
you know, you can run a mine and you are not an engineer, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Because all you need to know, understand is the economics of it, right? What comes in, what goes out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think um, you, you know, it's very crucial that um, we, we learn that um, while, while, while we are still young and we teach it to our kids also. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think as you are saying that, I'm reminded of somebody said that we don't invest as much into learning about marriage as we should. Yeah. Though marriage affects a lot of our lives, basically. Yeah. Yes. So we won't buy a book on marriage. We won't attend a seminar on marriage. <laughs> but yet we expect that our marriages will be successful. <laughs> so I guess the same also goes for, for finances. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That we know the impact that finances have. Yeah. Even on our own marriages themselves. Yes. That I think it's the number one reason for divorce. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. That finances are the number one. Yeah. But you won't have a book mm. on uh, on finances that you are reading. Yeah. You are not listening to anybody. You are yeah. just taking advice from your friends and your neighbors who don't have the necessary <laughs> skills. So somebody has had some experience somewhere and then they just come share with you yeah. and you take it and run. But yeah. we don't really. But I guess uh, that's the importance of having people like you. Yeah. Uh, saying, hey guys, here I am. I can help you and guide you on this journey yeah. of finance. But sometimes you just need really need somebody to just come and hold your hand yeah. on that journey. Yeah. To say, hey, come, let me help you mm. so that you can reach where you really need to yeah. to reach. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely, uh, and I and I like that point on 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 marriage that um, people hardly study marriages, um, we hardly study relationships. Mm. Um, for some reason, we expect to um, to grow strong in our relationships and to last long, um, but they, 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 there are ways, um, there are, there are teachings that you can learn which can enable you to 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 get there instead mm. of um, just hoping. Um, that something good will help because you know um, the, the the Bible speaks a lot um, about um, you know knowledge um, acquiring knowledge. I think it's a um, um, Proverbs twenty four mm-hmm. somewhere there. Um, it speaks about the acquisition of of, of knowledge and understanding. Um, you know to 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 have great wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know um, you 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 will not just get wisdom. Even people who did not go to school. Most of those who are wise, who are called wise men, these are people who, who, who maybe spend a lot of time, um, you know, asking questions and getting to understand. You, you, you don't necessarily need to go to school. Mm. It's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's your ability um, to want to learn and grow all the time. So if you are with an, uh, a, an old man and you are sitting there and this old man knows a lot about uh, you know, farming and, and, and stuff. You sit there, you ask him questions. So when when this is happening, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, how how do you sell this? How do you do this? How do you you are just acquiring knowledge. So wherever you are when you are with a doctor, you don't just get to a doctor's office and then you tell them I have a pain here and then they, they prescribe some medicine for you and then you go. You ask them questions. So so um, what does this mean, right? This medicine um uh, what is it going to do, right? How does it affect my body? Why do I always feel this way? The doctor is explaining. You know, people who ask doctors a lot of questions, most of them, they become doctors, <laughs> you know, without even knowing. Yes. Um, tomorrow, they, you know, you go to the house, you find they have a whole um, first aid kit. Yes. And, you know, they have all types of medicine. When something is wrong, they'll be like, okay, no, let's apply this. Let's mm-hmm. let's apply that because they ask doctors questions. I know um, with myself because I... I'm normally when I visit a doctor is a dentist, right? Um, so when I'm with the dentist, the only thing that gives me comfort when I'm with the dentist is after acquiring more information mm-hmm. on what they are going to do, the procedure that they're mm-hmm. doing. So before I undergo an operation, I sit there with him. I look at that tray. You know that tray? Yes, the yes, dentist the tray tools. that has all the, those big tools. Mm-hmm. And I'll be asking, so what does this one do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> What does this one do? And then they'll keep on explaining. And, and you'll realize that uh, professionals, they like to talk about what yeah. they do. Yes, yes, yes. They're always willing to give you information. You don't have to go and sign up um, for 
uh, for, for, for a dental degree. You mm. don't have to do that. Just ask a dentist, what does this do? Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to apply this first? Why do you have... You are just acquiring knowledge. So that that is really what we need to do. Acquiring knowledge. Um, I mean, how many of us nowadays um, really sit down with people um, who have been married for 50 years? You know, we hardly do that. We're like, no, our marriage is special. It's unique only to us. You yes. know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We are special. Right? We are special. <laughs> <laughs> But truth is, um, you know, th- there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. Um, whatever we are going to go through, some people have went through them. So mm. if we were to ask people, some will teach them through their own mistakes. Mm. You know, some will teach us um, through um, best practices that they have had. Mm. So the fact that someone, you know, was struggling in, in, in marriage when they started doesn't mean that you can't ask them for advice. Yes. Sometimes even people who got divorced, yes, yes, um, you know, you can, um, if, 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 if they're good people, you can ask them. They will tell you, you know what, um, if I knew the things that I know now, I don't think I would have gotten divorced. Mm. You know, and then they teach you those things, and then you won't, um, you know, suffer the same fate. Yes. Mm. So it's a iron sharpens. Yeah. Iron. <laughs> yes. I think we are in a generation. I guess maybe Mungwe, I'm now thinking of it, or we don't really listen these days to our elders. Yeah. Because we have been to school. Yeah. Uh, we have earned our degrees, our masters, and PhDs. Yeah. So in our minds, we think that we know everything. Yeah. But we realize that there is a lot yeah. that you don't know yeah. about a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. But we have to remain uh, teachable. Yes. I think just being hungry for knowledge. Maybe sometimes I'm just now thinking about it. It's even the books that we decide to read. Mm. Because we will opt for uh, motivational books. Yes. That's all you read. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. no, you can make it. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Go in. Ah, you go can in. just start. Just start. Go in. Yeah. But you don't realize now that you are going in. There's a lot of information. You are going into farming. There's a lot. You are not even reading farming books, but you are telling somebody to go. Yeah. Uh, reading books about somebody encouraging you to go into farming, but you're not yeah. reading farming books. Yeah. What is what does farming involve? The yeah. the accounting that is also involved. Yeah. That is. I think that's something that I've actually learned from my mother-in-law. Yeah. Uh, my mother-in-law is a is a doctor, yeah. uh, specialized as a dermatologist. Yeah. Uh, and then when I remember I visited her, I found her reading accounting books. Yeah. Yes. She was like, no, I need to know yeah. how my money is, <laughs> how yeah. my money is, yeah. is doing. So I'm yeah. not going to hand over and leave to my accountant to sort me out. Yes. I need to have an understanding yes. of what is going on. Yeah. So I think that is a culture that we really need to yeah. cultivate. No, we need to. We need to. Because um, here's the thing. I, I remember when I, I started working, I used to be intimidated by someone um, from certain uh, professions you know um a doctor comes and i'm like hey, it's a doctor man they know everything <laughs> yes. and 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 they're coming to me I, 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 I'm, I, I'm providing them with uh finance services right mm. and then this person is a doctor and they're asking questions and i'm like <laughs> they're just challenging me <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, wa- they want to see if, if i'm if, smart if, enough. If, if i'm smart enough mm. i realized much later that these people really didn't know Right, mm. they are only doctors. You know, they have studied that for for so many years. They understand a human body or whatever that they have been taught. Right, they don't understand finances. This person is only a farmer. Mm. They have start, you know, studied farming. They understand farming, but they don't understand other things. Yes. Right, and then I realized that you know, if you are well versed in your field, it's good for your growth in that field. But it's not necessarily good for your growth as a human being, generally. Because you'll be challenged with a lot of things. Right? That's why you need to be brought. Um, you know, G- G- Jim Brown is the one who, who, who likes to, uh, you know, to say, look, you, you need to have a library, a proper library. Um, you know, if you are a pastor, um, you know, you can't ha- have a library full of Bibles. Mm. You know, you have to have a book on science. Because um, once you understand science and what it's saying about the beginning, that's only when you can argue properly yeah, yes. that um, the beginning that we get from Genesis is the right beginning, right? Mm. But if you are just having an argument because you've only read the Bible, 
and you have not read their point of view and what they have said, right? You can't pick holes. You can't convince those people to come to God, yes. right? Because you don't understand what they have studied, mm -hmm. right? Um, you, you, you know, you, 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 you read um, books on... Um, on, 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 on farming, agriculture, understand, you know, how, 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 how animals nowadays are, are taken care of, how, how, what they feed the animals with, how can you make um, a decision on what you eat nowadays if you don't understand the developments in that area. Yeah. So he was basically speaking about um, um, a library being a proper library like any other library. You know, a library will have genres. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So you need to, to, to have that. It, it it helps you to become whole. It helps you to become whole. You become relevant to the issues that are currently present. That's why we fail to, you know, raise our kids properly um, because we, we don't even study raising of kids. We are like, no, it will happen automatically. <laughs> God will do his thing, <laughs> you know. And then you have three kids who are totally different, mm. you know, different personalities, you know, they behave totally differently. Um, one, it's, it's, it's naughty, you know, they don't listen. They're always trying dirty tricks. Um, you know, the other one is just like you. You know, they do the things the way that you want mm. to do them. Mm. And then you want all the kids it's to adopt like, what this yes, child yes. is doing. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with all of these kids. God gave you all of these kids. Mm. Knowing that um, if you acquire enough knowledge, you'll realize that he has given you a mind. Like all of these kids, they have different traits for a reason. Because you can't work with one trait with what God wants to give you in, in, in the future. So it's, it's, it's very important, like you said, for us to be, um, you know, to, to be broad and, you know, understand different subjects. And, yeah. and finance is just one of them. It's not the only one. Yes. It's, you know, it's just one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you need to be versed in law. Yes. You need to become a mini lawyer. You need to become <laughs> a, my, a mini financial <laughs> advisor, a mini doctor. Yeah. So you need to be versed in all of these, uh, yeah. all of these uh, areas. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what would your number one uh, advice be to the listener, to the one watching right now? Yeah. Um. So you know, I would say, I would say. Uh, we need to we need to obsess um, on um, acquiring knowledge. I think our country needs um, people who are knowledgeable in a lot of things because you know I listen to our conversations most of the time, our arguments, and I think that they're, they're quite shallow. You know, they're quite shallow, and you know people get upset too quickly because they don't understand a lot of things. And you can tell when you are having an argument with someone that okay now. It's getting heated like too quickly. You know what's going on here is because you've you've hit a nerve. You've gone to a place um, where they have never been before mm. because the brain is sophisticated. It wants you to tap into a lot of things, but we are not doing that. <laughs> you know, so 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 I would advise um, you know um, um, our 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 viewers, your viewers, um, you know to to make it a habit to acquire knowledge because that's when we are going to see the. The, the greatness of God, really. Um, once we, you know, we have enough knowledge, we'll hear God speaking to us in so many different ways. Right now, we can hear Him because maybe um, He's speaking. Um, he's speaking in in in, in scientific ways, yes. and 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 you, you can hear you Him because understand. your brain yes. doesn't have you know scientific information. Maybe He's speaking to you um, um, in Latin, mm. speaking legal terms, you know, mm. and you can hear that because. You, you understand nothing about legal. But this is not to say that we should be registering for courses and going to do law and things like that. God has designed us in such a way that we have to be dependent on others. On each other. yeah. So if you need legal information, you want to be well-versed in, in things of legal, um, you need to approach people who are doing um, law. Right. You don't need to, to be attending classes. You just need to ask them one or two questions. If you have to pay, you'll pay. If it's free, it's free. But YouTube nowadays, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, right now, um, someone um, is out there, you know, listening to our conversation. 
I'm on YouTube, Daleni. Yes. You know, um, they can also go to other sites on YouTube and check out someone who's teaching law because um, now God it's just sending everyone from all over the world to teach us. So this information, we actually have no excuse at all yes. not to be acquiring information because back in the day it was difficult. And I didn't like to read like hard copies. Mm -hmm. I like to listen to audio books and I think um, the creation of audio books was really a lifesaver for me because I, I didn't really like flipping pages yeah. and going to the library to pick out books, you know. But nowadays it's so easy. Whatever I need, I can go on YouTube. I can get a book on Audible. Um, you know, I can listen while I'm running. You know, I can listen while I'm at the gym, you know. So there's really no excuse. We just need to acquire information so that um, we can be uh, better able to, to serve God. Yes. Mm. Uh, I know just... Is it a financial planner that you just put out? Um, yes, 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 yes. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's actually a, a finance self help book, okay. and uh, and uh, it's a, it's a journal. It's a fin there's a financial journal. Yeah. It's a financial journal. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll put everything in the description box, and then for those who want to reach out to you and get more, get wiser. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's why we we exist to equip you. We don't want to just equip you in terms of the spiritual, but we also want to equip you in terms of how do you become a good steward and manage that which God uh, is giving you. That's how we are going to be more impactful. And we are also going to be more generous Absolutely. for the kingdom. Because uh, I think that is another topic for another day. Yeah. Just the need for us as Christians to be generous. Yeah. We see that with the Acts yes. Church. That's the first church. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The level of generosity that people were sending their land to come and take care yes. of those in the church. Yeah. So we can only do that if we actually own land. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't you own, it, own it first. Yeah, if you don't own anything, then chances yeah. are you can't be able to do anything. Yeah. So uh, thank you, sir, for making time. We really, really, really appreciate you and the wealth of the seed that you have planted today. Yeah. Yes. It yeah. shall surely grow into a mustard seed. Yes. Yes. No, thank you so much for having me and uh, continue doing the good work that you are doing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.